Hello and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you four spring trash to treasure thrift store makeovers that I created this weekend on my mom's crafting weekend. So if you like this kind of content, I would love it if you'd subscribe to my channel where I upload thrifting, decor, and DIY videos. And of course, you can always find me on Instagram at Nicole North Garden. Here we go. My voice is mostly back with me. Um, I had a fantastic weekend. I do have a blemish. It's there. Let's just talk about it. These are the things that happened, especially when you're sick. Um, sometimes your skin does not like you. So that is going on on my face. I do apologize just so no one has to say it in the comments because that happens sometimes. <laughs> Anywho, I am drinking coffee from the most adorable McCoy um, strawberry coffee mug. I think one of you sent this to me, although I've, I'm forgetting now. It could have been a bins find, I don't know, but either way, I think it's adorable. And so I'm going to share with you today some of the crafts that I made this weekend on the Mom's Crafting Weekend. And then I will also be putting up two more videos from the weekend, another DIY crafting video, as well as a vlog from the weekend. I did a lot of thrifting. So I'm going to put that one up a little later in the week because I'll do like a thrift with me vlog. And then um, over the weekend, I will show you my hauls from this past weekend. I came home for President's Day and actually went to the bins with my hubby because they were having that 40% off sale and I didn't want to miss that. So I wound up coming home a little early and he had the day off, so I wanted to spend it with him anyway. So. Um, that is what will be happening this week. Thank you all so much for your well wishes. Um, I will try to get around to, I have read many of your comments. I haven't gotten to respond to any, um, but I will try to do that in the coming days. So I hope you enjoy these spring trash to treasure, thrift store makeovers, found objects, crafts. That's what I like to call them, but that doesn't come up in YouTube search. So <laughs> I have to call them other things. Throughout the video, you will see crafts get finished and then in different shots you'll see that they're not finished and that's because I was making all of these crafts at the same time basically so working on this one and then this one but when I edited the video I thought it would be easier for you to follow the crafting process if I edited all the clips of each craft together as a single project so that's why you might see something get finished but in the next clip maybe it isn't finished again so just just go with it. I just wanted to make it easier for you to follow the crafting process. So let's go ahead and get into the video. The first project I'm going to share with you from my mom's crafting weekend is a look for less. I saw these bunnies, which are slightly larger than the one I'm going to make. They were being sold three for $175, which of course I would never pay. They are Mackenzie Childs, which is a designer if you're not familiar, but I thought they were just adorable and I knew I could recreate one for less. For this first Mackenzie Childs inspired a bunny rabbit on a spool, I have this rabbit in clothing that looks similar to the inspiration that I got from Goodwill, as well as a wide spool and a narrow spool from my existing stash. I needed the narrow spool to transfer the thread that was on the wide spool, because I wanted to use the wide spool, but I didn't want the thread. So I just went ahead and wrapped it. Then I gave my spool two coats of Rust-Oleum Linen White Chalk Paint. Then I used strips of painter's tape to tape off the spool and I somehow lost the footage of that part. But I basically placed, I guess they were probably about quarter to a half inch strips of painter's tape, about a quarter to a half inch apart from each other around the entire spool. And then I gave the entire thing another coat of chalk paint. And I did this to seal off the tape so you can do the same thing with a stencil. It basically seals it off if you use the background color and then you use the color that you want the stencil or in this case the areas not taped to be. And this way when you pull the tape off later you get very clean lines. The paint does not bleed underneath because it's all sealed off with the background color. And then I used my Arteza black acrylic paint marker to create little squares between the strips of tape and about a quarter to a half inch away from each other. And then I went ahead and pulled the tape off. And you can see when I pull off the strips of tape, 
the squares have very clean lines. Additionally, because of that extra coat of paint that went over the tape, there's also guidelines that kind of stay behind. So then when I had to go ahead and color in the rest of the squares, it was much easier to do because I had guidelines that were left behind when I pulled the tape off. And I'm sorry, it was very hard to get a proper angle to film this footage um, just because of where I was and I was not going to inconvenience my friends to get good footage so I did my best please don't comment in the comments I am aware that this was not the best angle for a DIY now the Mackenzie Childs pattern that I was attempting to recreate is called courtly check and it started out as a hand painted pattern so the squares on courtly check were not ever intended to be perfect so I thought that this was a good approach for recreating this design. Courtly check as it was originally created was black with a color they called toasted marshmallow, which was actually tones of the black paint pulled through the white paint. So I wanted to achieve that effect on my spool. So I used my aged glaze and a dry brush. And I basically used a dry brush technique to just pull some brown tones through my white paint to get it closer to what the original courtly check looked like. And here is my finished spool. Then I used the tight bond glue to glue the bunny to the spool. And the bunny is a little top heavy. I mean, he stands up, but I feel like it could break if it falls over. So I will definitely use poster putty when I put this in displays. But here is my $3 version and I think he's just as cute as the ones that were being sold for $175 for three. For my next project, I pulled out this little teacup and saucer that I found at a yard sale this summer, as well as this little angel from my stash and some floral foam. And the first thing I did was to cut the floral foam so that it would fit into the little tiny cup. So I kind of gave an imprint of the cup onto the floral foam so that I would know where to cut it. Then I used my scissor in a very improper way and I ideally I would have used a hobby knife but I forgot to bring my hobby knife set with me. So I just used my scissor and I just, here I, you can see I just kind of cut the foam cube. And then I pressed that foam cube down into the cup. You won't see it in any of the footage, but I did actually go back and put a drop of glue in the bottom of the cup so that the foam would stick. Then I used my scissor and I trimmed off the foam so that it was flat. And then I actually dug a little bit of it out with my finger, I think. And then I put my angel on top of the floral foam. I used a little bit of tight bond glue on the angel and I spread some over the floral foam for a nice tight fit. And I just centered the little angel into the cup. And then my friend Tammy had the idea that I could put little flowers around the saucer. I actually found these old pink and gold buttons, I think, or they might be clip-on earrings. I'm not entirely sure. I will show you a close-up in a moment. And so I used the tight bond glue to glue three of those around the cup on the little saucer. And the next morning I added some green moss around the angel to cover up the floral foam. I used a little bit of the tight bond glue to glue that on there. And this is the finished product. I think she is just darling. And I am going to list this one on my Etsy shop. I think she would be great on a tiered tray or for someone's angel collection for Easter or even for Christmas. For this third thrift store makeover, I found this brown lightweight bunny at Goodwill for $1.99 and I thought he would look really cute in white. So I gave him two coats of Rust-Oleum linen white chalk paint. And while his paint was drying, I created a little embellishment for his neck. I got a piece of my Dollar Tree greenery and this pretty old button or brooch. Um, I pulled this off of another craft at the bin, so I'm not entirely sure what it was in its former life, but I am going to use it for crafting. It's already been used for crafting. So I used the tight pond glue to attach the piece of jewelry to the greenery. And then I let that dry for a while. And then the next day, once everything was dry, I grabbed a very fine grit sandpaper. I, I used 220 grit 
just to smooth out some of the brush lines that were in his paint job. And I like to use the 220 grit to smooth brush lines. It does a really good job without taking too much paint off. And then when I was done with that, I got a very rough grit. This is 60 grit to actually um, distress the bunny and actually take some of the paint off in the places that I wanted it to come off. And then once he was all distressed, I got my aged glaze again and I didn't have a rag. I forgot to bring one with me. So I used two paper towels that were moistened and I just would dip. You've seen me do this before. I just dipped the paper towel, the damp paper towel into the aged glaze and I wiped the aged glaze onto him. And then I used the other damp paper towel to basically wipe it off. So you're wiping it on and wiping it off until it looks the way that you want it to. And obviously you can leave more or less aged glaze on there depending on how you want your project to look. Then I grabbed several strands of raffia and tied them around his neck. I actually used the tweezer that comes in the Arteza marker set to feed the raffia through his ears because <laughs> I needed to get it around his neck. And then I just tied it. I actually didn't tie a bow. I just did like a little, I don't know. I just, the first part of when you tie your shoe, whatever that's called, I did that. Originally, I thought I would do a bow, but I didn't like the way the embellishment looked on the bow. It was just kind of popping out too far from the bunny. So that's why I just did the half bow or whatever you want to call it. And then I used tight bond glue to glue the raffia to his neck so that it would stay in place and then I used more of the tight bond glue to glue the embellishment to the raffia. And for whatever reason, it took a really long time to dry. Like I didn't have a problem with the tight bond most of the day on most of my projects, but for this one, I did wind up using hot glue as well, which you won't see in the footage because I didn't realize it until like hours later. This is what he looked like, looks like. Now that he's done, I was going to sell this one, but I like so much how he turned out that I think I'm going to keep it and use it on my dining table. For this last thrift store makeover, I wanted to use this decoupage box. I had decoupaged this several years ago with a box from the Dollar Tree and some napkins and I used it in my decor for a while as a riser but it's just been sitting in my stash for about a year or two now so I decided I would paint the inside of it and then create a vignette with some of my collected smaller items. I gave the inside of the box and the lid two coats of Rust-Oleum Linen White and then I dry brushed some of the linen white onto this little wagon that I had gotten. I don't even know where at this point, either a yard sale or a rummage sale. And I just wanted to brighten it up a little. It was a cute kind of grayish purpley color, which I liked, but I just wanted to brighten it. So the dry brushing did that. And then I filled the wagon with some moss and then a little bunny that I got at a thrift store, as well as some flowers. And these flowers are from the Dollar Tree. I just snipped off flowers from larger bouquets. And then I glued the box to the lid. And I don't know where the footage for that is, but you can see it here. It is glued with the tight bond glue. And then I started to build accessories to go into my vignette. I used one of these little chalkboards from the Dollar Tree as well as a little wooden flower pot that I had picked up somewhere. And that container holds all my Easter smalls. Some of you have asked how I organize my things. And for crafting, I organize a lot of the little things I pick up into those little plastic divided containers. And just like in my little teacup craft, I filled the tiny flower pot with some floral foam and that gave me somewhere to stick my little chalkboard stake into. So I put a little drop of glue and glued the floral foam in it and I knew that the chalkboard stake would be too tall for the vignette because it wouldn't fit inside the box. So I just needed to measure to see how short I needed to make it. And then I just used my scissor to kind of make a break line 
So you can see here, I'm just kind of I'm not really trying to cut it. I'm just trying to make a line. And then I snapped the extra stick off so that the little stake would be the right size to be able to fit into the box. And then I glued the chalkboard into the little prepared flower pot. And here's what it looked like after it was glued. And then I used my Arteza white acrylic marker to write fresh flowers, 25 cents on my little sign. And then it was ready to go into my vignette. I glued floral moss into the bottom of the box and spilling out a little onto the lid to make it three dimensional. And then I started to fill the box with all of the little accessories. So first I put the little sign in, in the back. And again, for this whole thing, I'm just using the tight bond glue. It worked really well for this. And there was no glue webs, which was nice. And I filled the box with the rest of the items. I used some stalks of flowers to make it look like they were growing. And then I put my wagon in. I had to figure out where I wanted it so I could put the glue in the right places. And then I glued that in and let the whole thing dry. I did add this little flower pot with one single flower to the front. I just thought that was a cute little accessory. And that's the great part about this is it's really art that you're building. So you can just kind of add what you like until it looks the way you want it to. And here is what it looked like filled with all of the items. And now I'm going to show you a shot of what it looks like in its final stage. I did add a ribbon and a little vintage brooch. To the top of it. And here are all the thrift store makeovers I worked on this particular morning of my mom's crafting weekend, as well as a bonus that I didn't show you because I forgot to record it. If you like this kind of content, I would love it if you'd subscribe to my channel where I upload thrifting, decor, and DIY videos. And of course, you can always find me on Instagram at Nicole North Garden. Thanks for watching.